This is hashtag Africa. A banned Cameroonian athlete is running against his country's anti-gay laws. And like many African nations, homosexuality is illegal in Cameroon and sports stars are fighting back against the openly homophobic views among sports officials, which are holding back the country's athletic potential. Thierry Sambo was ousted from Cameroon's national squad in a scandal over homosexuality. In a country where homosexual acts are illegal, the 38-year-old has little hope of reviving his career, although he still runs every day despite being haunted by the incident. The hurdling champion said he'd been training for the 2014 Commonwealth Games when a senior sports official told journalists and fellow athletes he was gay. I saw that day all the people who usually looked at me in the stadium with admiration, with respect. They now looked at me with contempt. I was a laughing stock. I was despised. I was booed. People would form small gangs to talk about me. People would look at me. It was really traumatizing. And then a little while later, the news reached my family, and it was a shock for them. They couldn't take it. Asamba's family kicked him out after the media reports, and he was suspended from the national squad. Unemployed, shunned by relatives and ridiculed by his peers, the one-time star said he tried to take his own life more than once. He now works in a hotel. Same-sex relationships are taboo across much of Africa, which is some of the world's most prohibitive laws against homosexuality. Cameroon's penal code punishes same-sex relations with up to five years in jail. The Cameroonian Athletics Federation did not respond to requests by the Thomson Reuters Foundation for comment about Asamba, and the International Association of Athletics Federations said it had not received any evidence of a suspension, but would investigate if it did. He's not the only top athlete to have suffered in Cameroon. One female footballer who did not want to be identified said she was made to leave her soccer club after rumors surfaced that she was in a same-sex relationship. Beshem Pisatani, who coaches the Cameroonian women's football team, summed up the official attitude to homosexuality. Lesbianism or homosexualism or in Cameroon is not legalized as it is the case in America. So America is an open society. Cameroon is, uh, is more Christian and Christians don't accept that. So uh, a girl who is playing football in Cameroon is not supposed to be a, lev a lesbian. He's supposed to play as a, 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 a normal creature of God. Equipped with new skills from jail, Kenyan ex-convicts are turning to agriculture, a program in the country's working to rehabilitate prisoners by teaching them farming skills to enable them to earn a living once they are out of jail. In the central highlands of Kenya, Duncan Nderitu is hard at work. After serving a five-year term in jail, he's now back at home growing maize and coffee on his three-acre plots. Convicted in 2013 for handling stolen goods, he became the beneficiary of a program that equips inmates with farming skills, enabling them to become productive once they're out. I trained in organic farming and mastered it very well. When I completed my jail term, I came back home and started practicing organic farming. I turned it into a business that can help me support my family and stay away from crime. So that I don't end up in prison again. Rather than focusing on punishment, Kenya's government says it's trying to turn prisons into rehabilitation centers. Inmates can learn a range of skills from organic farming to animal husbandry, carpentry, tailoring and hairdressing. Over 1,300 inmates have graduated since the program began two decades ago. The impact is proving far-reaching, with former inmates like Nduritu sharing their knowledge with other community members. His wife Beatrice says he's helped others to grow food for their families and run profitable businesses. I was not harvesting anything from the farm, but now I get a huge harvest. We are farming. What I can say is that I have seen firsthand that Duncan has reformed. And if he finds people who can support him, he will go far. He's working very hard.
Even the neighbors agree that he is working hard. Could Sudan soon be luring tourists away from its northern neighbor, Egypt, while not neglected by the world? Sudan's pyramids are slowly starting to attract more visitors as a new government relaxes visa rules to entice visitors and hard currency. Are Egypt's pyramids of Giza getting a new contender on the continent? Sudan's mirror pyramids may not seem like it. They certainly don't have the name recognition. But the country is trying to make that change. Its pyramids are smaller in size but outnumber their northern neighbor. Sudan only pulled in around 700,000 tourists in 2018 compared to Egypt's 10 million. A tough visa system and a lack of roads and decent hotels outside the capital have made it an unlikely destination. But since the toppling of veteran ruler Omar al-Bashir, the new civilian transition government is working to ease those visa rules. Simply put, they want more tourists and their money. Chinese tourist Leo was a recent visitor. I'm excited and I feel, yeah, I feel I'm in uh, ancient time. <laughs> It's very fantastic. Nearby temples with ancient drawings have also captured the imagination of tourists like Tania Montero from Portugal. I saw lots of pictures and we were sweeping nearby so I was able to see it during the evening and in the morning. Uh, until now I found the landscape really beautiful and the people are really, really nice, always very welcome. Like the Egyptians, the Nubian Kush dynasty that ruled in the area some 2,500 years ago buried members of the royal family in pyramid tombs. Thanks to funding from Qatar and Germany, visitors to the ancient city of Moreau will soon be able to enter the pyramids and go into the tombs. But Egypt still has a treasure trove of tourist offerings and some unique animals you won't get to see anywhere else. Now, some new mummified bodies were unveiled last week, but these weren't human bodies. Let's take a look. Egypt's antiquities authorities uncovered a large cache of mummified animals and what they say is the world's largest scarab beetle at the ancient Saqqara necropolis south of Cairo last week. The discovery was made last year by an Egyptian archaeological mission, which uncovered ancient artifacts including masks, statues and mummified cats, crocodiles, cobras and birds. Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, Mustafa Waziri, who led the mission, said they also uncovered a tomb belonging to a 5th dynasty royal priest. Waziri also said that CT scans done on five of the biggest mummified cats revealed that there is a strong likelihood that they are lion cubs, according to the size and shape of the bones. Egypt's Minister of Antiquities also said that the French Egyptologist Elaine Zivi had previously discovered a skeleton of a lion in the area. The discovery included around 75 wooden and bronze statues of cats. Saqqara served as the necropolis for Memphis, the capital of Egypt for more than two millennia. That was this week's edition of Hashtag Africa. You can keep the conversation going online. Our Twitter handle is at Africa underscore ENCA. Keep sending us your video messages of your wishes for Africa in 2020. But we leave you with uh, pictures from across the continent this week. I am Tubala Mututwani. Until next time, take care.